Hello and welcome to this edition of Stats Chats. In this episode, we are going to go over a tutorial for log linear analysis. You may be wondering, okay, well, what is log linear analysis? Log linear analysis is a statistical test used to determine if the proportions of categories in two or more groups vary variables significantly differ from one another. So um, this may remind you of the chi-square except for the two or more groups part. So this tells us if there's a statistically uh, significant effect between groups or pairs. In other words, is there a proportion of one variable different statistically from the proportion of another variable? As my colleague Tiberio likes to say, is this apple statistically different from this grape? Um, so just imagine you, you didn't know that much about the differences and you wanted or needed to understand them. So we do the same thing with our variables. Is mindfulness different from self-compassion, for example, or is mindfulness different from attachment-related anxiety and from gender? And are there any statistically significant differences between uh, variables as well? So with log linear analysis, there's not an assumption of normality. Um, we can use categorical data, so we are, we are dealing with categorical data here. Um, one assumption that is present with log linear analysis is that each uh, level must have at least five values within it. So like let's say we set up a variable of low, moderate, and high attachment-related anxiety, we would want to make sure we have at least five values in each of those categories. Um, and trying to place this in context, with a statistical test you're already familiar with, the log linear analysis will probably be most similar to a chi-square, but with a chi-square you typically have two variables, and an ANOVA uh, combined with the chi-square, you can kind of think of it as a, as a blend between this, the two, ANOVA meets chi-square, because it's non-parametric like the chi-square, but it compares across groups like the ANOVA. Uh, the chi-square typically examines the association between two variables, though those two variables can have multiple levels. Log linear analysis allows you to add a third categorical variable. Another way to accomplish this would be multiple chi-squares. However, we would have to conduct a von Fraunhofer correction to correct for the alpha level uh, because we typically pick 0.05, but if we do uh, lots of multiple analyses, we have to do a correction for that. Um, so, the log linear analysis is considered an extension of the chi-square because it builds on it. Um, in the field textbook, field puts it this way, to see whether there's a relationship between two categorical variables, that is, does the number of cats that line dance relate to the type of training used? We can use Pearson's chi-square test. This statistic is based on the simple idea of comparing the frequencies you observe in certain categories or real life experiences to the frequencies you might uh, expect to get in those categories by chance. So categorical data can be expressed as a linear model or as a as long as we use log values and then we get the name log linear model. Uh, each one of the predictor variables will have a parameter and log linear analysis starts with a saturated model and then it actually Go through the process of working backwards and doing backwards elimination but that's not just a random occurrence so variables aren't randomly eliminated but it's hierarchical so we start with the highest level interaction and then eliminate those variables till we find statistical significance so how do we do this in spss to run a log linear analysis you want to go click on analyze and when you see the drop down menu appear um, then you'll be able to uh, click on the next item, uh, but before we do that, just a friendly reminder that you might need to select cases under data if you want to just look at the treatment group or just the control group, for example. Um, so here we'd click on log linear analysis and then we'd click on uh, model selection. And then it says select variables, they need to be categorical, use the icon with the three circles to find them. So this is where you identify those variables with the three circles and you go ahead and move those over. And um, then you want to select options and click association table. Um, and then here is your output for the hierarchical log linear analysis. You can see the descriptive data in the first table, 
uh, indicating that we did use select cases and there was only 27, which is uh, close to the 30 for the treatment group. There may have been some that were, were left out there. Um, but we confirm and define the range correctly and check that we have three categories with three levels and then two categories with two levels. And so that looks right. So then we click OK. And um, when we, well, actually, actually, I'm sorry. After we clicked OK, we got this first table in the SPS output. Then the next table we get in the SPSS output is this table. So we just scroll down the output and you see the K way and higher order effects. And in this table, it shows the number of variables in the K column. So it also shows the P value well, value related to different combinations. And K way and higher order effects means that we're looking at the ultimate uh, combination of interactions. Uh, this is a, another uh, table and there's no statistically significant Z values. The idea of these five variables may not be a good model per se. Um, we ran the model again and looked at just three variables, self-kindness, attachment-related anxiety, and mindfulness. And this is what we saw for the SPSS output. So we can see the significance level is less than 0.05. So there is a statistically significant difference between high and low post-anxiety. So because post-anxiety high-low is by itself, though, this reflects a within variable uh, stat effective uh, statistically, uh, statistical effect or statistical significance. Um, okay, so what we're really interested here is this parameter estimates table with the z-scores and significance levels here. So it says the z-scores are standardized scores, meaning that the mean is zero and the positives are um, in the positive direction, the negatives in the negative direction. You get a sense of how far uh, the variables are from the mean. Uh, we're not really looking at that so much because we are dealing with categorical uh, variables, but we are looking at, at how some of that data is distributed. So we were concerned that the high-low truncation of ECR was not sensitive enough to detect differences. So we changed ECR anxiety from high, low to low, moderate, and high. Uh, we did this so that we could take a closer look at the distribution and numerically define it based on the frequency table. We can, uh, we, we then ran the log linear analysis again using uh, the variables mindfulness, which we had divided into low, medium, high, attachment related anxiety, which we had divided into low, medium, high, and then self-kindness, which we had also divided into low, medium, high. So what information do we need to report APA style results? Uh, let's consider this a checklist. We need to identify which analysis we conducted. So in this case, we would say the researchers conducted a log linear analysis. Uh, then we need to identify the variables for the model and identify the goodness of fit, um, whether the model was a good fit. Um, we need to report our p-value and whether we found statistical significance. And we need to, um, you know, ba basically report all the items on this checklist here. And then um, it might look something like this um, when we do the post hoc. So there's, uh, I'm going to go over the, the SPSS output, but this is also post hoc output if we want to do additional analyses. So we might say the log linear analysis did not identify where the group associations were located in terms of levels. The researchers did a post hoc one way ANOVA reminding um, excuse me, a one-way ANOVA using mindfulness as a grouping variable and the self-kindness as a continuous variable. This I identified with invariable differences and the researchers used a Tukey's HSD post hoc analysis to identify that the differences were associated between low and moderate mindfulness and low and high mindfulness. Um, then the, the researchers flipped this and uh, looked at self-kindness as a grouping variable. Uh, it grouped people uh, based on whether they had uh, low, medium, or high self-kindness. Um, and then what, one of the things that we found was that 
the mean difference was equal to 1.62. Um, and then we looked at the mean mindfulness score for those low in self-kindness and found it was 2.53 with standard deviation of 0.59 and uh, a set of nine. And then on the other hand, we uh, looked at the mean mindfulness uh, for those high in self-kindness. And they had an average mindfulness of 4.15 uh, in of 36 standard deviation of 0.67. Um, so there may be some question marks about um, where this is going. We have to go ahead and write some conclusions with respect to this data. So we might say the mindfulness levels of those high in self-kindness are very different from the mindfulness, mindfulness levels of those low in self-kindness. So if we wanted to target self-kindness and promote that, we might use some mindfulness strategies and check their efficacy. Okay, but what about the log linear analysis write-up? So there we might say, uh, here's a sample one, the researchers conducted a log linear analysis to examine for statistically significant association for three variables, including mindfulness, low, moderate, and high, attachment-related anxiety, low, moderate, high, and the self-kindness subscale of the self-compassion scale. The fit was not adequate. Chi-score equals 10.25, P is greater than 0.05. However, there was statistical significance between self-kindness and mindfulness. Note, uh, the main thing uh, for this log linear analysis is to create a model with the three variables and see if there's a statistical association between the variables. So uh, we did have some uh, associations as mentioned above, but the model itself we did not have support for. So I hope this gives you a good idea of uh, the purpose of log linear analysis can serve and how that can be helpful. And, uh, and uh, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. God bless you. And I hope this gives you some concepts to contemplate until next time.